Hello everybody and welcome to Writer's Block, the channel where I help you to plan, write and publish your novel. My name is Joshua Bennett, author of this book right here. Let's get started. Things you should know before writing a novel. Now, writing a novel is a long and painful process and before you commit yourself to it, there's a few things you should know. Number one. It takes a long time to write a book. Nothing in the book writing process happens quickly. From planning, to writing, to editing, to re-editing, nothing happens quickly in a book writing process. So if you're expecting to hold your book in your hands in the next six months, I think you may need to lower your expectations. And to help put it into perspective, I've done a bit of math for you. If you write 1000 words every single day, it will take 80 days to write 80,000 words. And that's not exactly groundbreaking math, but it's important to get that concept straight away. 1,000 words a day, 80 days, 80,000 words. That's the average length of the average novel. Now, I know what you're thinking. 80 days to write a novel? That's not that bad. That's actually quite good. The problem is when you're balancing work, your social life and kids, you might not get the chance to write every single day, or you might not get the opportunity to write a thousand words a day, which can actually be quite difficult. So in the case of our math problem, we'll say you only get to do 500 words per day. Suddenly your 80 day book has blown out to 160 days, 160 days, which is half a year, right? Then factor in taking weekends off and suddenly your first draft has gone out to over 200 days. And that's if you wrote a minimum of 500 words every single weekday. That's just to get to your first draft. That's not including rereads, all the rounds of editing you'll do, sending it off to a professional editor, re-editing it after it gets back from the professional editor. What I'm trying to say is it all takes a very long time. You should expect at least one year from the moment you start planning it you should expect at least one year before you're holding that book in your hands. Number two, know the genre and age group that you're writing into. This might seem a little weird to have on the list because you'll know if you're writing a romance because there's romance in it. You'll know if you're writing a fantasy because it'll be a fantasy story. What do I mean when I say that you should know the genre and age group that you're writing into? The reason you need to know is because different genres, different age groups will expect different things from your book. For example, the average word count of a romance novel is between 70 and 100,000 words. The average word count of a science fiction fantasy story is 90,000 to 120,000. The average word count of a historical fiction is 80 to 100,000. Uh, thrillers, horrors, crime thrillers are 70 to 90,000. So if you're planning on writing an adult book in that genre, your readers will expect you to hit those word count goals. And as for the age range, if you're writing a middle grade book, they're expecting the word count to be between 25,000 and 40,000, young adult between 50 and 80,000, and adult books dependent on genre. In case you haven't heard those terms yet, middle grade is usually stories written for people that are between the ages of 8 and 12. Young adult is usually written between the ages of 13 to 18, and adult is uh, anything over 18. The big difference comes from people that are writing either young adult, adult, and differentiating themselves from those two genres. There's usually a lot of debate around what makes a book YA, what makes a book Just adult. Better. But for you planning your story right now, all you really need to know is the difference between young adult and adult is how deep you explore certain themes, such as romance, violence, drug or alcohol use, interpersonal relationships, uh, criminal activity, views on life and mental health. If you're writing a young adult book, you will usually not explore these themes as deep as if you were writing an adult book because your audience hasn't experienced life as much as an adult reader has, so they won't be able to understand it as well. The other reason why it's important to know which exact genre that you plan to write into is because different genres have 
certain expectations and some have certain requirements that you cannot pace yourself around. Take for example a romance novel. A romance novel is expected to follow a very romance heavy plot between two or more people and it's expected to end in a happy ending. Not only is it expected to have a happy ending, but it's actually a requirement. Because if you write a fantastic romance novel, but it doesn't end in a happy ending, you haven't actually written a romance novel. If, say for example, uh, one of your main characters dies, you actually haven't written a romance novel, you've written a tragedy. For example, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet is not listed as a romance novel because it's actually a tragedy. Science fiction books have to include some form of scientific uh, fantasy element to it, usually involving space travel, uh, aliens, um, advanced robotics. Fantasy books uh, have to have some form of fantastical element to it, it usually involve dragons, elves, dwarves, orcs, uh, magic is a big one for fantasy books. And here it's important for me to tell you that it is possible to combine the genres in a book. For example, if you've written a story about an orc and a hobbit falling madly in love and pursuing a romantic relationship, not only have you written a fantasy book, but you've written a romance. So you've written a romance fantasy or a fantasy romance. If the relationship has low stakes, it's just very fun, very floaty, doesn't really look into the deep issues of, say, racism or any of that from the orc and the hobbit being together chances are you've written a young adult fantasy romance because it doesn't look into any of those deep issues if however you were to dive deeper into say the physical and emotional uh parts of their relationship and on top of that views of racism between the orcs and the hobbits that were being together and they were looked down upon because of it Chances are you've written an adult fantasy romance because you've dived deeper into those issues. If, on top of that, one of your main lovers was to die, you haven't then written a fantasy romance, you've written a fantasy tragedy or a fantasy drama. Number three, it's important to keep in mind that writing a book is actually very expensive. It's not a cheap thing to do. Uh, to put out a very good quality book is actually a very expensive endeavor. To give you an idea of some of the things that you have to pay for when writing a book, you have to pay for the writing instruments, such as Microsoft Word, or your computer, your laptop. You have to pay for your editor, you have to pay for your formatter, you have to pay for your cover artist, and there'll be other miscellaneous things that you have to pay for in the process that you won't expect to pay, but it will come up. You should, at this very moment, at the beginning of your writing process, you should expect to pay $3,000, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but at the end of the day, you're asking people to buy a product or a service from you, so you have to invest money into it to make sure that it is as professional as it can be. In a later video, I'll break down exactly how much everything costs from the editing to the software, to the hardware, to the book cover, to the formatting, to actually publishing it. I will break down all the things so that you have a better understanding of exactly what you should expect to pay. But a lot of it comes down to your discretion you get to pick who edits your book. You know, maybe you can find a better price. You get to pick who does your cover art. Maybe you can find a better price. You get to pick all these things. It's all your decision and you might be able to get good prices. As I said in the first point, it takes a long time to write a book. So you've got at least a year to start saving some money. Number four, don't rush it. As I said at the start, Writing a book is a long experience. It's a marathon. And if you try to sprint during a marathon, you'll just tire yourself out and give up. It's the same with writing your book. Don't set yourself ridiculous goals to achieve. Break it down into smaller goals. A small goal achieved every day will accomplish more than a big goal achieved once a week. One of my biggest regrets 
during uh, the writing of my first novel was how much pressure that I put on myself to pump out words to achieve some arbitrary word goal that I set for myself. Didn't matter. Didn't matter at all in the slightest. Just I put down some kind of word or page count that I had to reach at the end of the day. Otherwise, I would just feel like I failed, I didn't accomplish anything, and I was worthless. And I hated myself for it. And if I can pass on anything to you, it is simply do not rush it. Do not put your do not put that pressure on yourself because it's just it's not worth it. It's a long experience. Enjoy the process because you're going to be there for a while. And especially if you want to make a career out of this, you don't want to have to have that stress on your shoulders every single day for the rest of your life. Number five, it's going to be hard. You're going to have a lot of self-doubt. Every writer does. There's no way around that. Even the seasoned professionals that have been writing their whole life have a whole set of catalog behind them. All of them have self-doubt. You cannot get past that. It's, we're only human. You're gonna run into the bane of every author's existence, writer's block. You're gonna run into walls that you didn't even know existed. But all that's fine, because that's why I'm here. That's why I'm creating this series of videos to help you through all the dramas, to babies walk you through everything. I've been there, I've been in your shoes where you ask questions, you get the most random answers. I'm here to physically just walk through every single step of the writing process with you to take all the guesswork out of it and to make something that is ridiculously difficult just that little bit easier. Uh, number six, I feel a little mean saying this one, but the fact is you probably will not get a movie deal or a TV deal. I don't know how many people have asked me about writing a book together so that way we can get it into a movie or into Netflix or something. But um, if you're interested in getting your story into a movie theater or into Netflix or whatever, don't write a book, write a screenplay. You know, I'm not saying that your story isn't gonna be good enough for TV or movie, but if you want specifically to have your story told on TV or movies, write a screenplay. That's what they're for. Number seven, there is a lot to learn. You will be surprised how much you need to learn in order to write a good quality story uh, from, you know, outlining to developing characters to developing good villains to character arcs, redemption arcs, editing, marketing, and everything in between the whole publishing process and how to work all the little things on Ingram Spark or KDP or whatever you choose, or, you know, how to query. But like I said before, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help. Number eight, and finally, it's all worth it in the end. Whether you're just writing for the fun of it because it's a passion of yours because you want to tick something off your bucket list or whether you want to make a full-on career out of it whether you want to make a side hustle out of it writing your novel is an amazing accomplishment no one can ever take that away from you no one can ever take away the feeling of when you hold your novel in your hands for the very first time and just that profound sense of accomplishment that you get from it you've achieved something that other people are even too scared to dream of. Other people are too scared to jump on YouTube and say, how do I write a book? Because they don't even wanna take that first step because they're scared to fail. And you've accomplished it, you've done it. Nothing is better than that. That's my list of important things you should know before you start writing your novel. I hope that was helpful. If it was, give this video a like, hit the subscribe button. The link to my next video will be here. Thank you very much.